Uh, you are joining us now live and uh, monitoring everything that's been going on. Let me just set one thing straight. So Viktor Orban did manage to get the EU to offer those cohesion funds, the 10 billion odd funds that we had been discussing yesterday, but in return did not offer his support for the 50 billion uh, package for Ukraine. How did that come about? So when I spoke with the Prime Minister of Hungary about that subject, he said that there's no link between the 10 billion euros that Hungary received earlier this week and the 50 billion that are meant to go to Ukraine. But we know that the timing is at least odd when it comes to these two subject matters. But from this European summit, practically speaking, there was no agreement on disbursing 50 billion euros for Ukraine because Hungary vetoed that. Now, the good news when it comes to that is that there's a broad support from the other members of the EU from the 26 to disburse this amount of cash to Ukraine. The leaders will return to this subject in uh, late January. And my understanding from speaking to officials already at this morning is that the reason for this delay is that they want to, first of, all, first of all, convince Hungary to come to terms and approve these 50 billion. Uh, but if that does not happen, then the 26 need a little bit more of time to take care of some domestic paperwork, really. So then uh, by the end of January, they can and say yes to these funds for Ukraine. But in essence, this amount is going to be sent to Ukraine. It's just a question of timing and who is behind that decision. But let me show you these remarks from the Prime Minister of Estonia. I catch up, I catch up with her just a moment ago, and this is what she had to say about the relationship with Hungary. That is the will uh, that we will definitely find a solution then out. But of course, it's much more difficult because you have to think of uh, new instruments and uh, that means also going to the parliaments, uh, getting a mandate and, and it is uh, more, more difficult uh, this way but uh, we are working on this, uh, these ideas. It was clear uh, that uh, we uh, did not come to conclusion uh, yesterday night. It was a clear uh, victory on the uh, accession talks uh, so uh, there was no point that Hungary would give another, another uh, good news, I would say. Prime Minister, just to clarify, you said that to Prime Minister Viktor Orban, he chose not to be part of it. He said, you can go ahead, but I'm not going to be a part of this. Does the EU have a problem with Hungary? Because um, how can you work when uh, you don't have unity? Really? Yes, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've said several times here uh, before, as long as uh, he says the wrong things but does the right things, we, we are okay. And we have been united so far, and we were able to deliver the uh, decision on the accession talks yesterday. Uh, so uh, it was interesting for the history books how, how it was done, but uh, I will not talk about this today. But, but anyway, uh, I think uh, we all are democracies. We all have different worries. Uh, there uh, we listen to each other and try to find solutions. Uh, so uh, maybe this time, you know, Hungary has problems uh, in some other topic. Somebody else has a problem. But we try to find a common solution, and that is the uh, good part of, of uh, European Union, really. So you heard it there, a key quote from the Estonian Prime Minister. She said, as long as Viktor Orban says the wrong things, but actually does the right things, then we are okay. And that ended up being the case when it came to accession talks, because the 26 approved that, but uh, the Victor, Viktor Orban preferred to leave the room during that vote as a sign that he's not supportive of starting accession talks with Ukraine. However, he did not block that process. So taking it all in Germania, good and bad news for Ukraine from this European summit. They will be taking a little bit more time before the EU disburses this amount of cash. And then secondly, the good news, they are starting these accession talks, an important political message to Ukraine at this stage. Absolutely. Uh, the question that I'm sure many people are asking, and we are going to be talking about this a lot more in the coming months, is uh, what is Mr. Orban waiting for? And is he just stalling in anticipation of those European elections next year in a possible U.S. election as well. So maybe uh, he's thinking of the long game. Sylvia, thank you very much as ever for your coverage from Brussels.